looking here at uh, at Watford, I guess. Well, this uh, this is a graphic now that shows actually where the orbiter is, and uh, E D W is Edwards. Okay, okay. I, I landed. Where did that one? Back up. Um, and, uh, uh, altimeter. Buckhorn is a is a site in California. Okay. We're hearing the air uh, to ground exchange here, so this might bring us up to date. Roger, and the uh, surface wind is mission calm. control and the Capcom in the middle. That's in the Houston, Texas. Yes, that's in Houston. It, and the Houston is in control right up to and through landing, right? They will take it through landing, uh, and at, the, at some point uh, after landing, the, the uh, crew at the ground at Edwards will take over. Uh, we expect the uh, four-man crew, first four-man crew of the shuttle. In fact, uh, it is correct to say not that this is the first four-person crew ever launched uh, at the one time anywhere. I, I, I think that's true. Uh, here it is. Here they are, on the way back. First sighting there, uh, one of the uh, telephoto lenses has picked up the orbiter back after five days in space, uh, about to land at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Um, and we're probably pressing to another camera now. There base in California right now. Um, I guess it's because of the time of day that that cloud cover looks as heavy, thick, and dark as it is. Uh, Control stick steering. We're looking to the east, yeah. and so we're looking through an awful lot of clouds. It might not be that bad if you look straight up. Well, if we're picking up the orbiter this clearly, this early, I guess it uh, it can't be that dark. Uh, that, uh, it that appears to me color. as though the orbiter is in, the, in that final turn now to uh, runway, and those pictures, as a matter of fact, are being t taken from our chase airplanes, T-38s. So um, the chase airplanes have joined up with it, and this is live from 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 air. <laughs> Do we know who, who's flying in the chase plane? No, I, I, I don't. It's often J uh, John Young, I know, uh, has well, been Well, John, a John will fly the weather airplane and will uh, make a determination of this, as to the to the shears and winds and things like that. Well, look, someday, Fred, you will uh, in the next day, uh, you know, year or two will be there at the controls bringing in the shuttle so what is the pilot doing now is it is it on uh, computer control is it uh, entirely in the hands of the pilot what in the hands of the pilot he's following navigation aids Isn't that amazing biggest glider in the world you're looking real good on the hack out of 18,000 feet now at an airspeed of 260 knots. Landing in about two and a half minutes. Just went into some clouds. Going through a cloud deck. One camp that's right now, Larry. Feet. Okay, we show you right on the glide slope. The shot from ground cameras now on the monitors in the news center. Right on the glide slope. We haven't seen any of the chase planes close to the shuttle. That uh, usually occurs, what, about now at this time? 5,000 feet. Well, there could the very well be a chase plane uh, near, the, near the orbiter on the other side, just out yeah. of the TV okay. range. Yeah, of course, the pictures that we're looking at are presumably coming from one of the chase planes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, feet. obviously, they're that close. Again, his flare, and he's dropping his gear now. Gear down. Show the gear lock now. Oh. Right on the money. Hey. Right on the money. There's touchdown. It's so smooth, it's almost indiscernible. He slowly lowers the gear, the nose gear. 
unofficial touchdown time was five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Only in America. Extraordinary. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> You're the only in NASA representative we have around uh, at hand at the moment, Fred, so uh, congratulations. Five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Columbia performing a maximum braking test on this landing. Maximum braking to see how, how quickly they can stop it. Uh -huh. Absolutely, it was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. We deliver. <laughs> yep, yep, five days back from work. We delivered. For about 40 minutes from now, we uh, should see the crew disembark. There are a number of procedures uh, before then. There's a large convoy that will come up behind the orbiter for cooling and uh, purging. Got to wait for everything to cool down a little, don't you? Yes, and they'll we also it. sense if any uh, toxics or hazardous materials are in the vicinity of it, and then they will get the white room up to that front hatch, and you can see that right under the windows as quickly as possible to get the crew out of there. Looking at that landing, I'm reminded of uh, some of the concerns that were expressed before the first launch of the first shuttle. People said, uh, we're going to have a look at the replay of that landing if we can. That uh, was so smooth, I think. Uh, which until now has probably been the uh, you know, 10 out of 10 land. Yeah. Um, if you look, you can see some of the moisture on the on the desert down there. The, yeah, the, the darker blue is his water. That forced the landing on the hard surface. Yes. Okay. Looks like we're almost routine on hard yeah. surface now. Um, I remember we were saying back then, uh, before the first landing, that it was going to be like landing a, a ton of bricks or something, and all sorts of concerns it was going to be very bumpy, but uh, that has not proved to be so. Uh, evidence of which we're about to see in a replay of the landing of about uh, two or three minutes ago. Still looks good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sunburst uh, shot behind, I, I, I don't know if that's the dawn coming up. I can't quite work out the angle. Well, the sun is to the orbiter. Well, you can see the shiny side, though, yeah. so the sun is to this side of the orbiter. Must have been reflecting off the surface. They made a very yes. striking sort of a sunburst picture at the moment of landing, at the moment of touchdown. On the vertical stabilizer, the thing that stands up tall on the back of the orbiter are the speed brakes, and they flare open. Well, these are the uh, live shots now. This is some of the, well, just... Uh, one of the pieces of equipment in that convoy just drove by. Yeah, about 20 trucks or so in, in quite a lot. <laughs> or, or, it, or correction, I think it, it's 20 people and something like 40 trucks. It's, it's quite a long convoy. And uh, you see it starting to assemble the main vehicles advancing more closely to test, as you say, for any uh, toxic uh, yeah, uh, gases or anything. Right. One of the pieces of equipment is just a very large propeller. And if there are some uh, toxic or hazard materials around, they will start the propeller just to blow the blow the air to blow that air away. I think that's what that vehicle is in the lower center. Well, uh, fairly routine procedures are now underway after a. Uh I guess we can call it a routinely smooth landing. Very um, successful. Remarkably Very successful. successful landing. Uh, an extraordinary uh, event, uh, an extraordinary achievement of technology and science to yes. be able to yes. go from Mach 26, as you say, to a perfect pinpoint landing at Edwards. Um, we expect to see uh, the four crew members uh, disembark around about 10 minutes past 10. Uh, we'll come back uh, before then to keep you posted on the developments. Uh, everything seems to have proceeded smoothly we have a perfect landing a return home for sts5 uh, we will be back to uh, keep you posted on what's happening there at edward